degree in information science engineering from VTU and is currently pursuing a PhD from Srinivas University and has already achieved impressive credentials including certifications from Oracle, Cisco, Microsoft and VMware. With a robust background in higher education and specializing in computer administration, computer networks, data system, and programming, Mr. Sunil is a true master of their craft. His expertise extends to mobile application development, Internet of Things, machine learning, making them a versatile and invaluable asset to our community. With a professional experience spanning India, Uganda, and Kazakhstan, Mr. Sunil is dedicated to sharing knowledge and expertise. Currently serving as a head of academic system at Monfort University, Kazakhstan, Almaty. On behalf of Department of CSC and allied branches of SIT, I extend a warm welcome and heartfelt gratitude to you, sir, for graciously accepting our invitation and for sharing your valuable time with us. request Mr. Sunil Kumar to share his invaluable insights on a topic that is at the forefront of the technological innovation, cybersecurity in the age of AI. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for the brief introduction. Uh, dear students, distinguished guests, uh, fellow researchers, uh, a very good morning to each one of you. It's my uh, uh, honored to be here uh, today presenting in front of uh, such an audience. Uh, so uh, I'll be I'll be jumping into the topic uh, directly. Uh, so uh, I'm, uh, can you please confirm uh, is is my screen visible to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, so uh, let me let me start uh, my presentation. So today's uh, topic will be uh, uh, cyber security in the age of artificial intelligence. Uh, so as we all know, computer science is uh, the heart of virtually uh, for every modern advancement, be it uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, Internet of Things or quantum computing. Each innovation brings us uh, very close to some of the world's complex challenges. So there are so many new opportunities uh, in, in the area of computer science. Whether you are an academic uh, uh, or a professional or a student, we all are uh, united by uh, our shared passion for discovering uh, and pursuing the knowledge in the area of computer science. So let me introduce uh, today's topic, the cybersecurity in the age of artificial intelligence. So these two are the trending uh, hot topics in the area of computer science. And uh, these are the topics which I'll be covering during this session, uh, introduction, and I'll be giving a brief uh, how cybersecurity is connected to artificial intelligence some challenges in the area of cybersecurity, uh, again, challenges in artificial intelligence, the consequences of cyber crimes or cyber attacks, then what is the best strategy to uh, succeed in, in implementing a sustainable and ethical uh, cybersecurity and artificial intelligence, then some emerging trends and technology in both the areas, followed by the conclusion. Uh, so, artificial intelligence is uh, not a new topic anymore. So, you all have been hearing about AI, machine learning, Internet of Things since the uh, last five to ten years. And in the last five years, uh, we are seeing a lot of applications uh, mainly uh, uh, implemented with these AI and machine learning models. So, it has changed. Uh, it has transformed completely the digital uh, era. So if I need to define artificial intelligence, uh, 
defining artificial intelligence is a bit trickier and is difficult as well. You will find various definitions uh, uh, in various sources. Uh, to keep it simple, artificial intelligence cannot exist without humans. It cannot work without humans. So we need to use artificial intelligence for enhancement. So we are being enhanced by AI. We are being more effective and more productive. But uh, again, we always need to remember AI cannot work completely without humans. So this is one of the simplest definition uh, which I can present to everyone. So artificial intelligence uh, is a discipline where machine has an ability of uh, human cognitive, uh, such as reasoning, knowledge representation, planning, learning, natural language processing, perception, and ability to move and manipulate. So machine which comes up with the knowledge that user finds insightful. You see, uh, artificial intelligence is uh, pure math. Uh, it's it's an advanced and new application of statistics. So artificial intelligence, uh, using this, we can successfully perform, uh, a machine can successfully perform any intellectual task. There are so many uh, uh, disciplines under artificial intelligence or so you can see on the right side, the artificial intelligence landscape. So starting from machine learning, deep learning, neural networks. So there are so many implementation or so many disciplines of artificial intelligence. So if I need to just focus on two things, machine learning and deep learning. So you all know machine learning can learn uh, itself without being explicitly programmed. So we mainly use machine learning uh, most of majority of the time for the prediction based on uh, a large data set. So how deep learning is different to machine learning. So uh, when we talk about or when we look at the machine learning, uh, it cannot it cannot uh, identify and correct the errors itself. But with deep learning, it recognizes the patterns and uh, it, it requires very less or uh, very less or no human intervention. It can correct its own errors by observing the patterns so uh, neural networks uh, comes under uh, deep learning so there are so many other applications of artificial intelligence as well uh, language processing then chatbots and uh, emotion analytics cloud robotics even cognitive cybersecurity. so these are some of the uh, we, uh, some of the applications of artificial intelligence. So I will not be much discussing about what is AI, what is machine learning. So I, I would like to uh, get into uh, the main topic, how AI can transform or can have its impact in the area of cybersecurity. So let me begin by uh, discussing uh, the interconnectedness of cybersecurity and AI, how they both are related to each other. Uh, so when I, when, if I need to explain uh, the relativity between the cybersecurity and AI, uh, sorry. So, um, most of the supply chains, which has uh, a very important information about uh, their customers, inventory, logistics, they are vulnerable uh, and disruptions uh, to the security risk. So we need to implement a strong cybersecurity practice with the use of AI, and it can minimize the risk, creating a more secure uh, supply chain or an enterprise network. So I've, I've just uh, created three sections here. Uh, the first one is cybersecurity enhancing the artificial intelligence effectiveness. You see, there are there is a mutual dependency between cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. So the cybersecurity is very helpful in making the artificial intelligence more effective. So we need to have a very strong cybersecurity tools and we need to have strategies and policies 
to protect the data which artificial intelligence rely on. We all know artificial intelligence, the key component is the data. If the data is not secured or if there is no uh, policy or a process to secure this data, again, the AI uh, might not be effective or uh, it might not be uh, much of use in, in various application. So this ensures the data which is used for this analysis and uh, decision making is accurate and trustworthy. So cybersecurity plays a very important role in every artificial intelligence uh, application. So secondly, artificial intelligence also strengthens the cybersecurity. So it is uh, a converse to the cybersecurity uh, advantage or benefiting the AI. So AI also strengthens the cybersecurity efforts by analyzing vast amounts of security data in real time to identify potential threats that human analysts might miss or might take a longer time. So the very uh, key application of AI in cybersecurity is we can use AI and ML uh, machine learning in malware detection, malware analysis, and also incident response. If we, if we are manually analyzing the malwares or detecting and uh, responding, so it might take uh, a very longer time and also we might miss some uh, key indicators in this process. So lastly, mutual dependence and synergy. So there is, as I said earlier, the mutual dependence between cybersecurity and artificial intelligence is evident. We can see that already. So AI effectiveness is contingent on the quality of data, while uh, cybersecurity measures the safeguard from unauthorized access manipulation or destruction so with this we can we can easily understand they both are dependent on each other uh, so moving to the next slide uh, i'll be discussing about some challenges in the area of cybersecurity. i would like to present some key challenges uh, so cyber crime uh, according to uh, dr darren williams is the founder of Black Fog. Uh, Black Fog is an organization uh, deal with uh, providing services, various services in uh, threat analysis, uh, threat de uh, detection, and uh, incident response. Uh, so the Dr. Darren Williams says, cyber criminals naturally gravitate towards targeting organizations with the lowest level of protection. And this typically means small to medium business come under fire. So most of the cyber criminals, they target uh, the organizations from small scale to medium scale uh, with a very low level of protection. And you see most of the organization, they can afford an advanced cybersecurity uh, implementation at their premises. So this, this makes it vulnerable and they become the target uh, for the cyber criminals or the cyber attackers. So uh, I would like to present some statistics as well, uh, the latest statistics. So cyber crime is predicted to cost the world US dollars 9.5 trillion in this year, according to the cybersecurity ventures. If it were measured as a country, then cyber crime would be the world's third largest economy after US and China. So that's, that's the amount of uh, loss the organizations are going to face. And also 75 of the security professionals witnessed an increase in the attack over the past one year. So this is uh, the main concern and it has to be addressed uh, immediately. And if you look at this, uh, uh, another statistic, if you look at this chart, you can see there are various incidents uh, which is listed by region from, for the last four years, 2020 to 2023. So you can see uh, Europe has uh, the ma uh, like major part of the cybersecurity incidents. Uh, if you look at 2020-24, 
and uh, followed by North America, then uh, Asia specific. So in every country, every region, the cyber incidents are increasing, uh, increasing by a significant amount. And uh, this is the right time to address it uh, uh, effectively. So next, I would like to also talk about uh, threat landscape the cyber threat landscape. So what are the major uh, threats we can see in uh, cybersecurity? So we all know about malwares. So most of uh, this is this is some, not something new. So since uh, since the invention of computers, we are we are uh, seeing a different kind of malwares. But uh, current in the current uh, era, the malware evolution uh, has increased, so it has evolved a lot. And some of the malwares, it's it's too hard or very challenging to even detect the malwares. So there are so many uh, varieties of malwares uh, uh, in in uh, various applications or various systems: virus, worms, trojans, spyware, rootkits. So these are some of the uh, malwares which I can list here. So there are various uh, incidents or case studies I can present uh, with respect to malware uh, infection. So I would like to uh, just highlight one incident, uh, which is Docker Hub incident. Uh, so there is a, a research institute called JFrog. They uncovered that uh, numerous malicious campaign happened with the Docker Hub. Uh, so this is this Docker Hub is a prominent service. Mainly, uh, it is utilized for sharing the container images, right? So uh, the analysis by the JFrog researchers uh, identified 4.6 million non-functional repositories uh, crafted not for hosting Docker images, but for redirecting the users to phishing sites or facilitating the download of malicious code. So, Doctor, uh, sorry, Docker Hub is a very uh, reputed and a very uh, well-known platform. So, majority of the containers there was not used to host the uh, Docker images. Instead, it was used for phishing and for uh, spreading the malwares. So, this this was the latest uh, incident uh, and the uh, largest incident uh, malware uh, which has happened uh, recently. And nextly, uh, I would like to talk about ransomware attacks. So you all know uh, there are uh, so many ransomwares. Uh, it creates a financial burden on any organization. So this is uh, a threat to organizations of uh, small scale to large scale. Uh, so uh, if I need to give an example of a, of a ransomware, uh, so we have seen uh, uh, a WannaCry ransomware attack, which happened in 2017. So this exposed major weakness in the area of cybersecurity. It mainly targeted uh, Microsoft Windows operating system uh, using a leaked uh, national security agency exploit called Eternal Blue. So uh, the total impact or the loss created uh, with this malware uh we don't have uh, an official or an accurate number but uh, it had uh, affected more than 300000 computers across 150 countries so nextly the major threat is again a data breach so it's it's uh, a data breach is a security in incident where unauthorized individuals or hackers they uh, gain access to uh, the sensitive or uh, the confidential data so it can happen, the data breach can happen uh, using various methods. Some of them are listed here, hacking, insider threats, social engineering, physical theft, or weak passwords or poor security practices uh, in any organization. So uh, there was this uh, data breach, uh, it's called mother of all breaches. This happened in this year, January 2024. And this exposed, this breach exposed 26 billion records containing 12 TB of user data from uh, 
close to 4,000 uh, domains. So the data, the personal data or uh, the, the customer's data from 4,000 domains were leaked in the January 2024. So this, this is why it's called as mother of all breaches. And lastly, uh, we cannot ignore the DOS attacks. So there are uh, like two types of DOS attacks, single source and also distributed uh, denial of service attacks. So you are, uh, I believe you are well aware of uh, DOS attacks. It, it, it has been uh, in the cybersecurity landscape for more than uh, 20 to 30 years. And uh, again, the DOS attacks are evolving every day and it has, it is becoming uh, very challenging to uh, detect and uh, counteract uh, for any incident. And lastly, the man in the middle attack. Uh, so this is uh, also a, a major threat. Attacker se secretly intercepts and relays the communication between the two parties. Uh, so again, if I if I need to talk about in detail about uh, man in the middle. So it's a it's a normally a three step process interception decryption and relay. Okay, these are uh, some of the some more statistics. Uh, uh, so due to the availability of time, I'll be uh, skipping these statistics, but I'll be sharing the slides later. So these are some of the challenges in artificial intelligence. So AI is vulnerable to adversarial attacks. Uh, you see, th what is this adversarial attacks? Uh, this attack is uh, targeting uh, any AI or machine learning models. It it need it wants to uh, fail the AI or the machine learning model. So this is increasing, and no, uh, and all the AI models are vulnerable to these adversarial attacks. So these attacks involve uh, the malware or maliciously crafted inputs designed to trick or fail the AI models in making the wrong predictions or taking the wrong decisions. Another challenge is poison data and bias models. So poison data involves uh, maliciously altered or misleading information injected into the training data set of an AI model. Means we are we are uh, making the data uh, uh, lose its reliability. And again, the model, the AI model is dependent on the data. So if the data is poisoned, again, the AI model is going to fail. And also with the biased models, I can give you an example for a biased model. Uh, uh, you all know about uh, Amazon uh, organization. So they had a recruitment, uh, they had uh, started a hiring using AI uh, in, I, I believe uh, in the last, uh, uh, before two or three years. So in the very first attempt, uh, when they used AI model for shortlisting uh, the CVs of, of the candidates, it favored ma a majority the male candidates because the data they had uh, used for training the data, uh, for training the model uh, had majority of the male candidates uh, succeed in an interview. So there was a bias created. Uh, so we need to also look at uh, the bias, uh, how to overcome the biasness in any artificial intelligence models. So there are a few other challenges as well. I would not uh, uh, go in depth, but I would like to just highlight model extraction and reverse engineering, increased attack surface with AI powered tools, insider threats and automated attacks uh, are some of the challenges in the area of artificial intelligence. Again, what will be the consequences of cybersecurity or cyber uh, cyber attacks, uh, financial operational impacts, reputational and legal consequences, and also personal impacts. So these are the major impacts or the consequences of any cyber attacks. Now, coming to the uh, main point, what is the best strategy for uh, succeeding uh, an implementation of AI in the area of cybersecurity. So when we 
uh, create a cybersecurity policy or a framework, it has to be as per the international standard. So some of them are listed here, some of the international standards, ISO 27001, NIST. So this is uh, the policy or the framework uh, majority of the European countries uh, follows. Then we have CIS, uh, which uh, US follows. Then we also have ISO 27032. And lastly, we can see national cybersecurity policy, uh, uh, which is followed by uh, Indian uh, government as well. So this is uh, uh, being used since 2013. So all of these international standard uh, plays a very important role uh, in succeeding uh, or creating a sustainable and reliable framework which can uh, which can be used by small scale to large scale uh, organizations so nextly uh, you can see comprehensive cybersecurity framework so this is again a very important uh, uh, for or a player in succeeding uh, uh, the ai for cybersecurity so you can see some of the uh, techniques listed here, single sign-on with two-factor authentication, authentication. So most uh, of the applications should start uh, using the single sign-on, uh, which will, sorry, which will, uh, which will reduce, which will reduce uh, the incidents, uh, authentication, cyber uh, incidents then uh, facial recognition ip address detection uh, patterns of login then uh, we need to uh, mainly use some diagnosis tools like vulnerability scanners intrusion detection system penetration testing and also uh, edrs Sorry, uh, EDR, so uh, endpoint detection and response. Uh, and also we need to also uh, focus on processes for recovery as best practices. So some of the other uh, strategies or techniques which can help to create a, a effective AIs uh, implementation of data encryption and access controls, then security consideration in AI development lifecycle and also reliable third party services and uh, SIEM integration. So if I need to talk about uh, uh, this new term SIEM uh, uh, integration, so this is uh, uh, security information and event management. So this is uh, very crucial for modern cybersecurity strategies. So it provides real time analysis and monitoring of security alerts uh, generated by various applications and the networking hardware. So this real time analysis uh, uh, is very helpful in uh, addressing and responding to the security incidents uh, quickly. All right. So. Uh, the last section, I would like to cover uh, three things, uh, uh, which I describe as emerging trends and technology in the area of uh, cybersecurity. So the role of an artificial intelligence in cybersecurity. So this is very important. Uh, so we need to understand uh, the importance of uh, AI in the cybersecurity landscape. So as I mentioned earlier, the cybersecurity landscape is evolving rapidly. So we need to adopt to uh, with the cutting edge technologies. So uh, in this, I would like to highlight uh, three key trends. Uh, so the first one is AI driven threat detection. So we need to start using artificial intelligence in threat detection process. Uh, AI enhances this process by anal analyzing uh, vast data sets. So we can identify the patterns and anomalies, uh, which will help in identifying various cyber threats and uh, even the modern threats. So the machine learning algorithms also improves uh, the detection accuracy. 
so with uh, the uh, existing models so most of the existing models have become absolute with uh, the evolution of the cyber threat landscape uh, so we need to use machine learning algorithms to increase the accuracy of the detection there might be some false positives as well even some of the uh, like uh, uh, authentic data or the traffic might be considered as uh might be considered as a malware or a malicious traffic if the machine if if the model uh, doesn't perform uh, correctly so we need to reduce the false positives by learning from the past incidents so we need also need to uh, this also enables uh, real time threat intelligence and automated response so secondly uh, ai can be used in predictive analytics so AI uses predictive analytics to forecast the potential security incidents by analyzing the historical data and uh, identifying the trends. Uh, so this approach also helps in identifying zero day vulnerabilities and also emerging threats. So this helps the organization to strengthen their defense approach. So lastly, uh, behavioral analysis can be used again it plays a very important role in cybersecurity so ai monitors the user behavior to detect the deviations from the normal patterns so it indicates the potential insider threats or compromised accounts so this ability uh, helps us in uh, identifying and responding to a security breach in uh, at an earlier stage and it also uh, enhances the overall security so these are the three key uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, techniques which can be uh, used in the area of cybersecurity and uh, makes makes the system uh, more secure. Uh, so the second emerging trend I would like to also highlight about uh, blockchain the data sharing process and tracking uh, the data sharing as well so the first component i would like to talk about is uh, decentralized uh, security so you all know about uh, the operation of the blockchain so blockchain provides a decentralized security by creating uh, immutable uh, means non-modifiable ledger of transactions so this makes it resistance to the tampering of the data and also uh, it reduces uh, the chances of fraud in any uh, data theft or a data breach. Also, this, this uh, technology is very ideal for uh, secure data sharing and tracking in applications like uh, especially in supply chain management and financial transactions. So secondly, uh, the transparency and traceability. So blockchain ensures that we achieve transparency and traceability by recording every transaction with a timestamp and making it publicly verifiable. So this is very much beneficial for creating a tamper proof audit trails and enhancing the accountability in cybersecurity. And also smart contracts. So this automates uh, the agreements through the code uh, reduces the intermediates intermediaries and enhancing the overall security so blockchain also plays a very important role uh, in securing uh, various applications especially uh, related to supply chain uh, management so lastly uh, we need to focus on zero sec uh, zero trust security model so this is a, a very uh, enhanced model uh, which uh, resolves uh, most of the uh, issues in the area of cybersecurity. So, firstly, principle of least privilege. So, this model operates on the principle of least privilege, means uh, granting the users a very minimum access, only the required access. So, we do not have to give uh, the complete access to every user uh, for every applications. So this is the principle which has to be followed uh, if there is some user of some application only the required amount of access should be provided so this reduces most of the 
most of the uh, threats and also it reduces the insider threat where some internal uh, user or an employee can uh, contribute uh, for a cyber crime. So second element of zero trust model is continuous verification. So zero trust ensures that there is a continuous verification of user and uh, device uh, identities using multi-factor authentication. So now you might have seen most of the uh, applications have been using multi-factor authentication. So this along with AI uh, implementation, which is uh, behavioral analytics uh, will ensure uh, that the validation of uh, access and it also prevents the unauthorized entry. Then the third element of this model is micro segmentation. It divides the network into isolated segments with uh, controlled access and uh, it also limits the movement of attackers within the network. If one segment of if there is a breach in one segment, it, it does not uh, spread to the other segments. So this uh, micro segmentation uh, helps in reducing the impact of uh, any cyber incident and lastly uh, implementing the best practices so this is a, a very uh, important uh, aspect for every organization so uh, zero trust involves implementing advanced security practices uh, updated policies and continuous monitoring so this should not be ignored by a small scale or a low, uh, low scale uh, companies or organization. Uh, nowadays, as I said, uh, the cyber attackers or criminals, the main target is the organization with the low level of security. So every, every organization should at least uh, focus and contribute uh, in securing their assets with uh, they need to create the policies or the security framework for their own organizations you see uh, there is no standard framework which which uh, which can be used by every organization so this has to be customized uh, within every organization and uh, that's why there is a huge demand for uh, cybersecurity specialists in every organization uh, so uh, Finally, uh, I'll be concluding. So I have talked about AI. I've talked about uh, uh, the impact or uh, the application of AI in cybersecurity. Uh, I cannot say AI helps cybersecurity. As I mentioned earlier, they are mutual dependent. So AI should be contributing for creating an effective uh, cyber domain same way cybersecurity should be contributing to artificial uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, effectiveness and also reliability so uh, i have also listed some uh, sophisticated cyber attacks some challenges uh, also in ai so all considering all of these uh, challenges so we need to uh, we need to be well prepared especially the organization to uh, minimize the impact of cyber incidents uh, in ensuring that even they occur the damage is minimal so the key the key uh, thing is uh, continuous improvement and the continuous adaptation so system can grow more resilient mature and secure ultimately reducing the vulnerabilities and fortifying the defenses against the future cyber threats so we need to have the right strategies and technologies in place so it is possible so uh, you see again there are always uh, two phases for every technology so we all know uh, with cyber security we have uh, different various uh, uh, kinds of hackers so we have uh, uh, black hat hackers and also we have uh, white hat hackers which is considered ethical hacking so same way with ai so now we have red ai red artificial intelligence and blue artificial intelligence. So we should be uh, much focusing on the blue artificial intelligence uh, where we focus on uh, creating a model for uh, the betterment of the society. So uh, thank you uh, everyone for your patient, uh, patient listening. So if you have any questions on the, on the presented topic, uh, uh, I'm, I'm open to the questions. Now the session is open for questions. Audience, any questions?
sir uh, does ai help to reduce man in the middle attack uh okay okay so i have uh, i can answer to this uh, question so so i would like to uh, uh bring uh, uh highlight a case study uh, how ai can uh, help in addressing the man in the middle attack as well uh, just give me a minute Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, to answer to this question, so first I would like to uh, uh, bring uh, to your notice about a case study. So, there was a, a man in the middle attack uh, on one of or uh, on several uh, European enterprises in the year 2015. Uh, so, this was being uh, discovered by European Cybercrime Center. Uh, popularly known as EC3. So this is a, a very popular uh, European uh, cyber uh, agency, cybersecurity agency. So the criminals used man in the middle attack to intercept and manipulate corporate email communications. It was uh, diverting the significant financial transaction into their account. So all the email communications of uh, several organization corporates uh, it was it was diverted to their accounts so with with the latest uh, solution so all of this behavioral analytics and uh, pattern pattern analytics uh, so that some of the ai models even now it is implemented by uh, some of the major mail providers like uh, uh, gmail google mail uh, then also uh, some of the cloud providers, so they are using these behavioral analytics. Uh, so this can this can easily identify the patterns and also uh, identify, explore the behaviors. Earlier, manually detecting these patterns or uh, creating some algorithm to a simple algorithm to detect the patterns or the behaviors was very challenging because the amount of traffic uh, to analyze on real time it's too challenging but with the real time uh, analytics available now especially with behavioral analytics and uh, real time pattern analytics so majority of the cloud providers so they also provide mail services so they have already started using these uh, ai models focusing on uh, focusing on behavioral analytics so this will definitely help in identifying the man in the middle attack because every incident creates a pattern and when we when we identify these kind of patterns it is uh, it becomes much easier in detecting any kind of attack so the same uh, goes with the man in the middle uh, attack as well i hope uh, this has answered to the question so if there are more questions uh, can you can still ask Yes, sir. I take this opportunity to express sincere thanks for conversation on cybersecurity in the age of AI. Your in on how AI is reshaping the cybersecurity landscape where truly and have deepened our understanding of the complexity we face today. Thank you once again, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you, madam. Uh, uh, so, lastly, uh, just just to the students, uh, I would like to highlight: uh, 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 we all need to be prepared uh, 
uh, in in this industry. So the jobs are going to be changed. So you might have uh, heard this from uh, several people. You might have read it from several articles. Uh, especially uh, when you are a IT student, uh, it's not only that uh, we need to know how to use an AI, but it's very important to understand how to uh, how to adapt an AI model or how to customize an AI model for any any given application. So this is very important. So the jobs will remain, but uh, the requirements are going to going to be evolved. So we all need to be prepared for uh, the upcoming uh, uh, transformation. So you are at the right place. Uh, so especially India, I've been uh, I've worked in several uh, countries outside India as well. So I've seen uh, I've been seeing students from more than 50 to uh, 70 countries and I have uh, have now an idea of uh, educational system across the countries. So to be honest, uh, uh, especially in the context of IT, you are at the right place. So India is achieving uh, uh, greater heights, especially in the area of IT and also artificial intelligence. Uh, there are people who are uh, leaving the country and going to other countries uh, for job purposes. It's okay, but when it comes to education, we are like uh, India is providing a quality education compared to a uh, majority of the countries, especially in the in the area of IT. So you are at the right place and uh, I'm very proud uh, 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 to be an alumni of uh, Srinivas Institute of Technology. So uh, I can say I'm a proud alumni of SIT. So I've, uh, I've studied uh, in SIT uh, for two years I'm, and I'm also doing my master, uh, PhD uh, with Srinivas University. So uh, you are at the right place and uh, good luck to each one, uh, each, each one of you uh, for your future in the US. So thank you, uh, thank you everyone uh, for giving me this uh, opportunity. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, thank you, madam. Uh, so I, I believe uh, I can, uh, I can leave the meeting now. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you once again and uh, best wishes uh, to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.